Good afternoon, everybody. How are you today? So glad you're able to join us in our new format. Um, it's going to be just a hair bit different. Uh, one of the things here is that um, you all won't be seen like in the meeting and uh, we're sorry, we won't see your wonderful faces, but I'm glad that this is a different format that allow us to um, be able to do a little bit more and make the um, presentations interesting. And now I've totally got myself messed up. So I'm going to stop the share and reboot there because I don't know what I did. There we go. Okay. Um, and I did switch to something else. Weekly webinar. Okay. We are ready to roll. Um, So welcome. Um, this is a new format. And when if you all have any questions, we would like you to use the Q&A if you're on the Zoom format. If you are on Facebook Live, please go ahead and uh, put your questions in that chat and then we'll get it forwarded over to uh, our format here. So we've got the process going. Um, our usual busy slide, but we love it because there's a whole lot of good stuff happening here in the near west side. And friendly reminder, we do have our Valite Street Oasis. It is a produce stand with also not only produce, but fresh food products. Uh, so it's at 38th and Valite Street, basically runs Wednesday through Sunday. Times are a little different there. Uh, you're welcome to go to our website for all those details. Neighborhood House is continuing to host a successful food pantry, and it is um, on Richardson Place. Again, go to their website. Wednesdays and Thursdays are when they are serving food. You only need identification, and they're serving 53233-53208. Uh, next week's webinar is Democracy Bridging. I can't, it's my, my little thing, just it there it is. <laughs> Bridge Building Through Engagement in Love with Stephen Olakara. So um, we're looking forward to that. Um, remember, we're in high COVID. It's not looking pretty. Our numbers in Wisconsin are not going the right direction. Um, wash your hands. Wear your mask. Two things. It'll make all the difference. Census is coming to an end. If you haven't done it, there is the link. Or well, I'll show you a link in a minute. Do it. Um, and it's voting season. Uh, please vote. I didn't get to make my slide about voting, but we will do that. And um, we will be doing a lot of featuring on our blog posts and in some other platforms to just remind folks to vote. And then today, Maiden Near West Side is with Lisa Kay. She will be showing us how to make stuffed peppers. So I'm looking forward to that and um, a delicious meal this week. As I said, uh, we really want folks to make sure they get the census. That's how we as a community are able to have our voices heard through our uh, Congress and Senate. So please be sure to take that. It's very easy. I did it when I right came out. A few questions, you're done. Not a lot of details needed. And it doesn't matter if you are considered um, a citizen of the United States, We're they are counting bodies. So you, anyone is welcome to take it. We want to know how many people are in our country, and that's what's important here. Uh, got a, a, a nice webinar coming up this week about um, purchasing homes. We have some beautiful homes in the near west side. Uh, that house right there is on State Street, um, and we are partnering with Take Root Milwaukee, and the uh, the, the workshop will begin at 10 a.m. You do need to register, so you can go directly to the takerootmilwaukee.com website to register, all free. Um, lots of good resources, um, some virtual tours, and we've generally been pretty successful with uh, somebody buying a home in our lovely neighborhood. So um, if you're interested in home purchasing, which now is a good time to do it, please join us. And then the link is also below. And if you view this um, as we post it, Facebook Live, and as we post it YouTube, there's a link there so you can access all of that. Um, so we hope you'll be able to join us. And then this week we have violence prevention with Desalyn Smith and Hamad Jabbar. Um, they, we are just running a little late with our speakers being able to get on board. Um, but I can, which I'm happy to try and do, is I brought up the um, 
website. So let's take a look at that and understand a little bit more about um, violence prevention in Milwaukee. And what that includes is the 414 Life Program. And it's a city program and aimed at reducing violence prevention. And hey, yay, I see your speakers. So I will go back. Hi, y'all. How you doing? Can we hear you? Let's see. Ask to unmute. Hi. I'm Hi. Thank you for joining us. And welcome to our webinar. Um, we are looking forward to chatting with both of you. Y'all feel like you're settled and ready to roll? <laughs> yes, it was just a busy day at the clinic, and so, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, not to worry. So, Desalyn and uh, Hamad, Hamid. is that, am I saying that correctly? Hamid? Hamid. It's spelled, it's Hamid? spelled incorrectly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's why. That should be an okay. I instead of well, an A. It is an I. Okay. Thank you. My apologies. We'll get that changed. Um, so uh, can you both share us, tell us about yourself and how you are involved with violence prevention? Prevention. Deslin, can you tell us a little more? Sure. Okay. So I'm Deslin and um, <clears throat> I sit on the executive board as right now I'm the acting president for United Garden Homes and we actually employ 414 Life. And so um, my work with violence prevention started many, 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 many years ago before this even came about. So when this opportunity presented itself to be more out in the community and um, be involved with more people in violence prevention, I jumped on it immediately. So I um, have raised my children in 06 zip code three uh, males, black males, one's daughter, and um, trying to prevent it in a motherly way, in a community neighborhood way where I was raising my children at, as well now in the work that I do. I also am a mental health trauma specialist, AOTA therapist, and um, so I just intertwine all of that together with what I do. So that's kind of in a nutshell. And to have the opportunity to uh, my organization to collaborate and partner with the Office of Violence Prevention on such a, uh, a awesome project that with Reggie Moore and David Mohammed put together with the Blueprint um, for Peace was just uh, ideal for me. So that's how, that's somewhat of a background for me. <laughs> and Hamid, how about yourself? Oh, uh, I have to follow her. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'll do that. <laughs> um, so um, um, I I uh, was involved in violence myself. Uh, I spent uh, time in prison. Did about 27 and a half years total. Um, in inside of the prison, my thinking started changing. Um, I started, you know, seeing the destruction in the neighborhoods, the communities, and um, um, decided that I wanted to do something different. And I wanted to be a part of the solution because I had been part of the problem for so long. Um, when I came out, it was kind of like a perfect storm. Um, my, uh, my wife, she was on the board of United Garden Homes. And, you know, I started attending some of those meetings along with her. She introduced me to um, uh, the president at the time who was, you know, going to be uh, one of the people very uh, involved in, you know, the process of hiring people for 414 Life. And they also are our employers. And so, um, you know, all of it just came together and I started uh, doing this work and, and I really love what I do. I, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. Thank you. That's very um, uh, noble work and obviously and unfortunately work that needs to be done. So the more feet on the ground, the better off mm -hmm. we are. I'm going to go back to our screen share and um, move to the next slide. Mm -hmm. If I can do it. I will have it happen. Oh, maybe it's just me. 
Okay, there we go. Um, so 414 Life, can you share um, some information about that program? Sure. Um, so 414 Life was started in 1995. No, Cure Violence. Well, excuse me, excuse me, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Cure Violence, which is the model that we use, uh, was started in 1995 at the University of Illinois uh, by Dr. Slocum, who is a disease specialist. Um, he saw that the patterns of uh, disease and violence were similar. And, and the same uh, strategies that are used for uh, disease control can also be used in violence prevention. And so um, the program has about maybe 70 different sites and maybe about five outside of the country. Each site can choose its own name and we chose 414 Life. Um, so the, the program is about interrupting the transmission of violence. So it spreads from person to person, like disease. And um, so we try to get in the middle and cut that transmission off. Um, so part of our work is actually being out in the street, uh, engaging the shooters and the people who are involved in the violence and try to put them in a more positive space and provide them resources, whether that be finding a job, whether that be uh, getting uh, their high school diploma, getting in school, you know, uh, getting treatment, whatever they need to, to put them in a positive space. And, so, and, and we also have a hospital responder that is in Freighter Hospital, St. Joseph. And so when someone is shot, um, the staff at the hospital refers them to us. And so we pick up that case and see what it is we can do to help them, put them in a more positive space. Um, um, we also try to change the norms around violence in the city. And we do that by doing what we call pop-ups, events. So we go into communities where there's been violence. We bring bouncy houses. We, we bring out some music, barbecue. We give away food and things like that just to try to bring more positivity into the area. Yeah. And how has that been going with the COVID crisis? Well, uh, it it, it kind of complicates the job because it, it yeah, brings an right. element that we didn't foresee. And so, um, yeah. you know, now, you know, because you're you're doing community work in the community, uh, you, mm -hmm. you do a lot of stuff that you didn't foresee. So we're passing out masks, hand, hand sanitizers. We're, we're, we're coming up with flyers to try to educate people about COVID because clearly we have some misinformation coming from the White House. But, but, uh, but we're trying to educate people about that and, and keep people safe, you know? Um, so, so yeah, that has brought another element to it. For sure. Um, are you still able to host events or is that just pulled back a little? Oh, yeah, we, we do it. We, we, we try to do it as much as uh, we can, social distancing, uh, <laughs> encouraging people to wear masks. We have hand sanitizer. We have uh, uh, gloves, you know, all of that stuff when we do our events. Cool. Very good. Um, Jesslyn, uh, is your role in um, Garden Hills, how, how did this all kind of, how did you get to be board president and part of the 414? You're not, um, you're not in Garden Homes. Sorry. Um, well, what, what it was is, well, I was affiliated with the board and I'm the uh, vice president of the board okay. right now. And um, I was brought on board. I was asked to be a part of the board based on the work that I do in the community. I um, am a clinical director for um, Gateway to Change, a mental health, behavior health clinic, um, right in the heart of the city uh, for 24th and Capitol. Mm -hmm. And it's right, borders right on the Garden Homes area. So we're trying to, we are in the process, not trying to create this behavioral health model in our community to touch more of our community. 
and um, the opportunity was presented um, with the grant proposal for United Garden Homes and the target area is Old North um, Milwaukee and the Garden Homes area. So we applied for the grant, we were granted the grant and um, we're very proud to get it. And it, it, it allowed us to expand our wings in helping in the community and being able to have a bigger force, bigger resources and more individuals that share that passion to work with um, what are deemed to be some underprivileged, some severely damaged um, individuals from the trauma that we see um, and trying to change that narrative of it becoming a normacy that it, it shouldn't be normal that we hear gunshots. It shouldn't be normal that I'm walking to school and I see bodies laid out. So to be able to join a force um, so that's kind of how we became a part of we just happened to be i guess in the right place in the right time and have our hearts and passion there and um you know we work very very closely with the office of violence prevention um to make sure that we're fulfilling that that mission to um interrupt the violence as Hamia said and and also uh do our best to prevent future violence and get the resources and help to the individuals and families, businesses, everyone is affected. So everyone needs these resources and that help. So that's how we were fortunate enough to get that and our mission to move forward. Um, can you talk about the Guns Down program um, and gun violence as it relates to Milwaukee and solutions for that? Go ahead. Oh, well, the guns <laughs> down is, is <laughs> that's, that's just a part of with 414 Life, and that's like a, a motto, uh, you know, it's, it's guns down, so we promote that, and so we, we have, as you can see, his lovely t-shirt, and work together with, with them um, to make sure <laughs> <laughs> to um, go out, and so when we're talking with um, our neighborhoods and our young people that's what we're we're discussing and then we're we're trying we're in the process of initiating more support for our young people so their voices will be heard so we can hear more of what do they need in order to put guns down or why do they feel the need to pick guns up in the first place and get them situated with the right individuals to help them. So that is our motto. One of our models is the guns down, you know, model two initiative or um, activate. What do we need to do for that to happen? So that's where it all ties together. So we go out and that's what, hey, guns down, what do we need for this? So that's where that all kind of fits in. Neat. Um, I don't know if you know the answer to this, and then I have another question mm -hmm. I can ask. Um, do you, um, what about if people find there is a gun that needs to be taken away, what can it, what should be done about that? Where can I, who do I call? What do I do? Where does it go? If somebody, if I want to give my gun up now, I have decided I'm done with that. Well, I don't know that specific answer, but what we, okay. what we would tell um, an individual if they contacted us, um, mm -hmm. we would definitely contact the appropriate people um, to follow that um, thing, that format, I should say. Um, it, there is a stigma with calling directly to a police department within mm -hmm. us. So um, we are more community oriented. So we definitely um, rely on our community leaders and um, we, we strive to build that trust and relationship with our community. So to begin to change the narrative, especially with the state that we're in right now in our community. Mm -hmm. So we will definitely take the call immediately and then we will then forward to our people and go forward where we won't take a gun of course right. however we will definitely get them to the appropriate people or the appropriate place to uh dispose of that thank you 
Yeah. That's awesome. Um, is, are there ways that uh, any of our um, listeners, um, viewers can get involved with 414 Life, volunteer and help the cause? Oh, of course. We are, <laughs> we are definitely always looking <laughs> for volunteers. We, I mean, as uh, Hamid spoke on with the um, um, pop-ups that we do, we we need and we want in our our future mission is to have as much community involvement because then that definitely will start that chain of positivity so um they can either contact i see you have the city milwaukee.gov forum for um the office of violence prevention or the united garden homes office um i have i don't know the number by heart right here 414 438 9404 and um any of those sources would get them in contact so they would either um uh, be in contact with baba um who is the program director for 414 life and um actually he and i work very very closely on getting those volunteers ready to go as well as hamid who is the supervisor one of the supervisors and ray is also another supervisor. Oh yeah, there, there's my information. Thank you. <laughs> there's all your information. <laughs> yeah, that's it right I'm there. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, uh, yeah, so any one of us will be able to get them in contact. And so um, again, like I said, I work closely with Baba, and he's their program. He's the 414 Life Program Director under United Honor Homes. And we work closely okay. and we're in the process of, of course, now with the pandemic going on, it kind of put a damper on the volunteer, but we're in the process mm -hmm. of having everything um, in place so we can be as safe as possible and getting those volunteers out. And we need volunteers from everywhere to just um, wearing the logo to say, hey, we're here to passing out literature to come in the pop-ups, helping serve food, helping with children that, you know, and whatever, whatever other talents they can bring to help bring our communities together. That's what we're looking for. Um, Is there a I'd like to okay. touch on something that Deslin talked about. Yeah. Uh, she kind of hinted to um, our um, relationship with the police, because I always get this question, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, like I have to explain to people that, you know, 414 Life is not anti-police or against the police or any of that. However, we we don't share information with the police. And the reason for that is that primarily the police respond to something after the fact. They come when someone is shot, they investigate, and then they start looking for the perpetrator. We are trying to stop the shooting before it happens. And in order for us to do that, we have to be able to get into places that the police can't. So, so there may be times when these two guys are shooting at each other and, and into it, and they're drug dealers. I come into their house, they might have guns on the table and drugs on the table. And they have to know that I'm not sharing that information with the police in order for me to get the trust and talk to them and keep them from killing each other. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so that, you know, once they believe we're sharing information with the police or we're snitching or telling or whatever, then they're not going to talk to us anymore. Therefore, we're not affected. So that's the reason for that. And obviously, it's a model that works um, based Absolutely. on the fact that um, it's been ex you know, the program's been expanded and is international. Absolutely. So, um, is there any mediation that 414 does as far as um, escalation of arguments or just um, kind of, I guess, in a similar circumstance where you're going in and talking to somebody that ha maybe has intent? Yes. Yeah, um, so, so it's it's about. It, it's about us sitting down, mediating conflicts, and also uh, stopping the retaliation. Because a lot of times you, you can look in areas and you can see that there was a shooting this week. 
And then next week there was another shooting. There was a, another shooting two, a month ago. And so we, you start to see that this is retaliatory. Like there's this war going on. And so we come in and we find out who the players are and all of that. And we, and we try to get between it and mediate and, and stop the retaliation. And, and that's, that's one of the, um, our biggest focus with having as many volunteers as possible. And so that they can spread the word of the credibility of the team and the people they work with. So they can entrust to give us a call to say, hey, this is going on. We need this over here. And that is what um, the, the team is definitely trained for. And they go in, and it's an awesome, awesome team. They work very harmonious, har harmoniously in the community, and they also have a relationship with different parts of the community. So that's the next reason why it's important for us to get as many volunteers as, as well, because that's the part of it. You could just be an eye and ear over here to just say, hey, you could talk to these people. It's, they're trusting. So, uh, you know, because more people want peace than they want violence, but they don't know how to reach out. And we've had such a disconnect in our community and we're, we're trying to reconnect. So, and they definitely go in and do that mediation, but we have to be aware of it to some time to do it. So, you bet. Yeah, no, understood. Um, and I'm going to remind folks, put, if you have questions, pop them in the Q&A. Um, you can do that on Facebook Live and it will make it over to us. Um, two more questions that have uh, come in. Uh, Hamid's t-shirt is popular and um, <laughs> so wondering how um, we can get some of those to help promote um, reducing violence in our city. And is that one of your... Um, formats for promoting uh, so we, um, you know we have many relationships with uh, people in the communities and so like uh, the office of violence prevention will will buy t-shirts 414 life we will buy t-shirts from people that have a positive uh, oh, uh, cool. sign mm -hmm. on them and and we'll wear the shirt because it promotes what we're promoting Okay. Uh, 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 you know, violence prevention, put the guns down. And so the person that we purchased these shirts from, uh, his name is Gideon. Uh, he works for Channel 4. Uh, as a matter of fact, I talked to him the other day. I put in another order. <laughs> so, um, yes, um, I can uh, forward that information to you and you can uh, send it to your list. Yeah. We would love that. Um, in addition to the fact that you are taking, um, I guess, um, what I would it say, proposals for uh, positive messaging uh, that could be displayed on t-shirts or mm -hmm. I'm sure and all sorts of wonderful different, st we have stickers now. Absolutely. And things, and and, there's a whole lot of great ways we can get the word and out. And that's part, that's part of the- have some stickers. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's, you know, that's part of the education part, changing the norms, putting positivity yep. out there, you know. Agreed, agreed. That's awesome. Um, and then how about some financial support? We, much like all nonprofit organizations, including Near West Side Partners, uh, funding's really important right now. Um, is there a way people can donate? Yes, they can contact the United Garner Homes Inc. Um, office. Um, okay. At the number, the 414-438-9404, that number, as well as we okay. do have a website, um, it is unitedgardenhomesinc.org, I believe. I'm um, okay. sorry I don't go to it, and we are, <laughs> we just remodeled it, so I totally apologize, but um, there is that website as well, so, um, okay. but the best way right now is to contact the office. And um, again, our um, program is growing and we are, you know, in hopes of having some of the volunteers hired on as staff. So that's another important reason as well as we're trying to, right now we're in two um, target areas, but I know um, OVP has a desire to, 
take care of Milwaukee County and we're just trying mm -hmm. to grow. So yes. And OBP is Office of Violence Prevention. Office of right? Violence Prevention, yes. Not to worry. So, um, well, I'm going to throw one more question at both of you before you wrap up. Um, any upcoming events that we can go to and also as an organization promote for you? So, um, <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we are always promoting different events. We have one that we're planning now. Uh, it's in this beginning stage right now. And so, um, if if I could contact you and you and your list, you know your audience, and you send that information to you, thank you. Um, because in the next couple of days, it's going to become more clear than it is right now. And um, uh, yeah, we we are always doing up events and different things like that. And so uh, if if we could, we could uh, give you that information and contact you whenever we do something. Yeah, it was with the pandemic going on, it was kind of difficult to really set and plan things. So it's, it, and they do pop ups yep. a lot. So it's, it is, you know, within, they'll plan it, they'll start planning it. Today is Wednesday for Saturday. Right. Type. So it is, um, you know, and, and so that's kind of, so it would be best to get the information over and then we could share it in that way. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely happy to promote that. Um, so, uh, thank you to both of you for, um, A, number one, being part of the solution. Um, that's what it takes is our village. So you're leading the cause and we do appreciate that. Um, taking time to share information with us so we can be sure and let folks um, know that what resources are available and that we all, um, the city of Milwaukee promotes violence prevention, which is um, definitely an important message unto itself. So. Hi. I'm going to, yes, Brittany. We did have a question come in. Again, if you are looking <laughs> to um, ask questions, go ahead and put those in the Q&A section for us. Um, but I have seen that we do have one that has came through the chat and it's just asking um, our team or our 414 Life team if they can um, talk about what target areas they're working in currently i was just typing back okay so currently <laughs> y'all i've seen it i'm yeah. on zoom so much so i target in on chat boxes no but don't currently, worry about that. We got currently the target areas um are old north milwaukee and the garden homes area those are currently the target areas however um it, we will go where needed. They, the team goes where needed. So um, if one of the team members gets, gets a call and say, hey, it's something going over here, that's where they're at. Uh, but the target areas that um, are, are old North Milwaukee and Garden Homes. Okay, so for those who aren't aware of Old North Milwaukee, can you kind of give us an idea of what section of the city that is? Oh, yes, that's a very, uh, <laughs> I, I, I hate geographics, but it is off of like Villar going up so, North 35th. Port. Yeah. Yeah, down, um, I think it could, I know it's Villar up to Hampton. Congress, Congress, Congress. on one side. We yeah. go to Capitol on the other side, down to Tonya and up to about Sherman. Okay, sure. And then Thanks. the Garden Homes area is just lower numbers, but it's Capitol, um, Atkinson. Atkinson, Titonia, the low, like 27th to 35th. In, in those areas. Got it. I apologize, I'm not very keen on that. <laughs> that's not usually the question that I answer. I, I just know yeah, that's <laughs> not, it's over there. Yes, it's <laughs> the on the website. <laughs> but but okay. like she said, um, you know, those are the target areas. And and the target area, of course, is you know, we, we keep that information for uh you know when, when you pull up the data we have to have the uh information and statistics in our target area however 
we respond citywide to anything. So we respond to South Side, we respond to other stuff. And so we're in the process of growing our team so that we can respond to more stuff. And, and eventually we would, we would like to have a team in uh, each district in, in the city. Awesome. And so that's what we're working to do. Gotcha. Um, and then this is a good question, which I think you will answer easily based on the format. Um, how do you measure your success? Um, you have pop-up events or your mission. What's, what's deemed a success, a success for the organization? Well, uh, the organization is doing well. We, we, we are successful in, in, in a lot of our interruptions. We've, uh, we've stopped a lot of people from uh, getting hurt and at worst killed. Um, so, so I'm proud about that. Um, however, uh, 2020 has been a, a, a very challenging year and um, I'm not satisfied with um, where we are right now because, you know, um, you, you kind of take this personal, you know, like when, when, I, when I get up in the morning, you know, one of the things I dread to do is, you know, checking my phone, my emails, uh, looking at the news to see, you know, what happened last night or early this morning where someone got shot or killed. And so every time that happens, uh, I feel like I'm failing, you know, and so I, I need to do more and work harder, you know. And in the organization aspect, they it's measured by the number of responses and the number of uh, positive outcomes, and that is definitely kept. And is is not yep. just in the target areas; it's kept everywhere. And before the pandemic hit, they were going into schools um, mm -hmm. and and everything. So it's the success, as Samia said, it, it may seem dim because it's so much, but just to um, intervene and mediate that one situation where we know that it was a high probability for a retaliation and to know that there was no retaliation. Another measurement of success is the case. Um, they uh, work with a caseload of individuals and they um, help with resourcing and jobs helping through school, helping with um, if the family needs food, getting all of those resources. So the success rate is also measured by the number of times those individuals return and continue to work with the case managers um, or who are deemed as case managers on the team. So there's many different measurements of success that it, it, it gives you a light at the end of the tunnel for the dim phone calls and texts you, that he has to wake up to, so. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Brittany, are we good with questions? <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. the answer is yes. Question. All right. <laughs> How can you measure success on your pop-up events or in your mission in general? Yeah, so that's the question I, I, I didn't I, understand. I, no. Can you repeat that again, please? Yes. How can you measure success of your pop-up events or in your mission in general? So basically you just, I just asked that question in a different way. So. Right, yeah, it's, it's kind of the same. So with the pop-up events, you know, we look at the outcome, the turnout of the individuals that come, the conversations that we have um, at, at the majority of the pop-ups, we'll have questionnaires out and um, we follow up with those questionnaires of the individuals of, you know, what do you need? How has violence impacted your community, your family, and you personally? Mm -hmm. um, and also another, as I stated, the measurement is the ones that give us a call back. Everyone passes out their cards. They have the information. And when we're asked to come back into that same area to do a pop-up, that's um, a measurement of the success that, hey, we want you back here. So we know that that mission of building that community is um, coming to pass. So that's a measurement you know, when we um, look at those measurements of success. 
And we do have a lot of places that we're invited back to, mm -hmm. that we're asked to come to. Um, it, you know, certain individuals strike in a different way. So those individuals are, you know, asked to come back specifically. So that's the, you know, good measurements of success that we're making that impact and mm -hmm. um, those goals to um, build up our community are coming to pass. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, let's see. We'll just give you a quick little again, so folks know that um, they want to go to Uniting Garden Homes Inc. Yes. Um, to find more information. Yes. Um, and pardon me. Yes. I just say yes. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. And then the 414 Life at the City is another resource. Um, we certainly will we'll be reposting this and can add more information. Mm -hmm. I think we've got all our questions because that was kind of the way we worked on it. And um, we do want to encourage folks that are participating in this, um, much like your organization, we definitely need support to continue our mission to be able to offer opportunities like these weekly events that have been uh, so informative mm -hmm. um, and useful and um, well received that we want to keep it up because it's really been a great platform. COVID has not, but is, we've turned, um, made a switch and it's been a great um, effort and a great, uh, just a great platform for us to be able to share our, all the good things going on in Milwaukee. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, and I, you're welcome. Mm. Um, are we all good? Yep. So we're back to the beginning. So. Um,